Hi guys, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching doing the trade review for, let's see, today's Thursday, the 14th of August. And uh, man, long, slow grind up is all I can say about today. So I want to go into today and I want to discuss a couple of concepts. One's the concept of bear market rallies. We're not in a bear market, but we'll discuss it. What the hell? I'll, we'll discuss tops for a couple of minutes. Um, I want to do a little bit on coaching on making good trading decisions as a trader, um, as an individual trader, and then uh, kind of take a quick outlook. So, uh, and kind of take a quick look behind. So, first of all, I want to go into the uh, volume profile. And the first thing that I want to point out on the volume profile, now let's get rid of the stuff that I have on here, and let's move this over here. Here we go. So the first thing that I want to point out on the volume profile is that um, on NQ, we've had absolutely zero damage. I've been saying this since day one, that we've simply come to the bottom of the range, and now we have traveled all the way to the top of the range, okay, or, or about, we're within earshot of the top of the range, okay. Number two, the NASDAQ is... Um, because the NASDAQ has not been weak, that it would be easier to the upside than it is a short side trade. And for those of you that are in the room, and I, the way I've decided that I'm going to run these trade reviews uh, is that I'm going to run them for the people that are paying, that are in the rooms, and that the general public can kind of uh, ride the coattails on that. But I'm going to plug in what we're doing in the morning, what we're doing in the evening, and kind of put two and two together. So uh, the, I, I was repeatedly stating down here that, look, there's been no damage that really we were going to get, have to get below 37.50 to have any damage, that that did not occur, and that it would be easier to the upside than it was the downside. Okay, number two in that process, let's look at um, ES. So ES, and let's get rid of all this stuff here. Don't know why. I cannot get rid of this stuff, but we will. Okay, so on ES, uh, there was some damage there. However, the damage was relatively, uh, well, let's just say it's not significant, okay? All we've done, look, let's put this in and be realistic. This was the breakout point, okay? It is a very normal technical pattern that when you break out, you come back for a retest, and then you take off, okay? Now, no, there's no rule that says you have to go to a new high or that that's how it's going to be. But look, there's if we look over the history of the last two years of the market, no downside bear market has worked. We were all waiting for this 1890 and then 1885, okay, and we just didn't get it. Not only that, but this day here when we came down and then we gapped to this point right here overnight back to 1910, essentially 20 points, and then we ran, and then we gapped from that point again, right? Many, many people were convinced, oh, this is just temp this is the bounce, we're coming back this way. This is the bounce, we're coming back this way. This is the bounce. And they get into these fighting modes where I'm just going to fight the market all the way up, okay? And then uh, for my Fibonacci guys out there, and uh, as my guys in the room, there's only one set of Fibonaccis I use. I won't really uh, go into a great discussion here on that, but from here... down to here. We've run to 50 to 62 back. This is a very normal retrace. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't be abnormal to come in here and grab this open gap that's sitting here, right? And then come back and pull back in, but not necessarily down to new lows, right? To come, But maybe come back and test this area here or this open gap sitting at 1930. But don't, if you're a day trader, don't think in terms, it, it does not do you any good to think in terms uh, we're moving from 1953 to 1880 or 1700 or zero. And the reason for that is <clears throat> because your average daily range, right, if you are trading, <clears throat> let's look at this here. Okay. Your area... Your field of vision, if we're at 1953.50, is really 
1983.50. Okay, and then on the downside for 1953 is 1923.50. This is really, okay, uh, up to this 84 and um, down to this 22, 23 area, okay, this is what I would describe as for a trader. This should be your field of vision here, okay, because everything outside of that, look, on all these days, look at these characteristics. Markets come down, they snap back up, okay. A guy who is pervert, technically, a guy could have shorted here, 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 and here, and here, all the way down, right? And on the majority of those days, lost money if you didn't have the appropriate stop because every one of the days, the markets did a U-turn back to the upside, about to the midpoint, back up, and then it made a decision from there, right? Um, so it, in that line of thinking, Okay, we all know a couple of things now that you can put to work for yourself. First of all, shorting, right, while very rewarding because it happens so quick, is a tough trade. And the second thing you know is that when we're stretched down, I'm not going to go into how many points we're stretched down, but when we're stretched down, you can expect a return. Now, the trick in this is finding where the return is, meaning finding where the entry spot is where you can have low risk and a high amount of leverage, right? That's what we're in this business for is a combination of getting the right spot, a lot of leverage, and then being able to get the right spot so that you can quickly get that, uh, some of that leverage off to buy you a cushion to give you a shot to the upside, which is exactly what we engineered when we were at 1924. Okay, I, I had highlighted that in the market preview. We would said this is where we wanted to get long, and sure enough, we got our moonshot from there back to the upside. Okay, so let's wrap, let's wrap that into what was going on today. Okay, so if we look at today's chart, that would put us right here, I want to say. Nope. That would put us, I have too many charts up, right here. Okay, there we go. So this is today's chart. So the first thing that we've been, that I've been hammering on in the morning session, if we'll expand this a little bit so that you all can see it clearly. And then we'll expand this a bit. And I want to take my time. I'm not a commercial guy. I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I'm trying to teach people how to trade and make money. Okay? This pattern right here for the first hour and 15 minutes today. This pattern for the first hour and 15 minutes. Okay? Let's go pull up another chart. Markets tend to repeat to a certain degree, okay, and both the NQ and the ES. Okay, let's pull this all together here if we can, boys. Okay. Most mornings for the last couple of weeks, it's been getting more and more mixed, I'll give you that. Okay? But we have been having a series of chop fests. Okay? First hour, chop fest. First hour, well, this was straight up and then turned into a chop fest. This was a chop fest out of the gate. Um, this was... Um, Actually, not horrible this day right here. This was Chop City out of the gate, Chop City out of the gate, and then again today, Chop City out of the gate. First hour has been hard. Market hasn't been trying to hide the fact that the first hour is hard. Go easy on yourself in the first hour, right, unless you know something that I don't. Now, you can have a different perspective on that, okay? I had a couple guys that grabbed. Uh, one in particular took a long. Uh, Tom this morning in the room uh, took a long. And on the uh, Globex low, uh, um, excuse me, test a prior day's high on NQ and did very well with that, uh, with that trade. And I had uh, one gentleman took the long on ES 
on the backside test at prior day's high. Now, I had a different read. I'll go into that. But the reason why I'm, I'm highlighting this is this is important. I know right now that the first hour and most mornings is hard as hell. Not only that, but when I look at all these days, later in the day, I've been getting great trades and great shots back to the upside on most of these days. And on days when I haven't gotten that shot right, uh, on this day here where we haven't gotten this or we haven't gotten shots to the short side, the moves to the upside have been so vicious that I wasn't necessarily looking for a short. I only had one short in here that worked this week really well, and that was this short right here. Okay, everything else I was really playing for uh, longs out of this area, and uh, this was this um, this was this uh, 1899 that we hit late in the day, and this is this uh, 1905 uh, that I tried to hit. Uh, earlier in the week, and then also 1910, first time in here, we hit that up, okay? Most of my trades in here that have made money have been long side trades, not short side trades. Very, very important to keep in mind, okay? So now let's go into today, and I hope this is helpful. Okay, so today, first thing that I pointed out, first of all, these blue areas, when I post the charts, these are what I've identified as poorly auctioned areas. That doesn't go necessarily strictly by the volume profile definition of a poorly auctioned area. It goes by my definition of a poorly auctioned area. Volume profile is great. I don't think it works by itself. I think it's a great, 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 great tool. Um, there are some great traders who use it very effectively. Uh, Futures Trader 71 in particular uh, is very well versed and considered. I would consider him a master at the volume profile. However, for me, trading just off a of volume profile by itself does not work for me, does not give me the setups that I need, and it doesn't explain what actions I need to take as a trader. Okay, so it's a place where I start, not where I finish, okay? And you'll almost never hear me talking about LVNs, uh, double distributions, P profile. Um, well, you'll hear me talking about P profile every once in a while, but uh, mostly you'll hear me talking about one timing, and uh, poorly auctioned areas, but I don't care that much about low volume nodes and high volume nodes. That all seems to shake out, uh, at least for me, in the wash. Okay, so first of all, NQ was strong out of, uh, opened out of the gate, and it was not leading. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, if you look over here, we look at that dichotomy at first. Um, ES was actually stronger than NQ. NQ actually took a trip uh, to the downside here early on, and um, made it an attempt for what I would consider a, tra a potential trap trade, meaning someone asked, Greg, this is for you. In this particular case, the trap trade would have been, see how we were unable to close below Wednesday's high? So on that first bar that did close below Wednesday's high, that was uh, would have been my thought, at least on NQ, that we pushed lower. I had no intention of shorting NQ. NQ has been working better to the, to the upside. Um, and then the other confusing thing was, you'll notice when NQ closed below the prior day's high, ES did not. Um, so the one trade I made this morning was finally when ES right here closed below um, Wednesday's high. Okay. I thought, well, that was our indication or our clue that we were going to go and break to the downside and come back and back and fill. That would have fit, fit in with, with kind of the vision of what I had for we've, we've counter rallied. We're going to come back in and fill some space. So I have a stop one point above here, okay, which uh, – and – for precaution reasons because um, really NQ wasn't falling apart and I wasn't entirely certain that we were going to roll over, I cut my trade size in half. Okay, so I ended up taking three and a half point stop on this right here, um, a three and a half point stop on half a size position. So net, that's about one and a quarter points on a regular size trade for me in the day. Now, I want to point out something else about the psychology of trading and my psychology of trading. So in the morning when I got up, my go to meeting was not functioning really irritated me a lot. It actually took me several phone calls to go to meeting and some technical work, which I hate to do. So uh, I was already running behind and agitated. So I was already aware that things were going wrong. So next, in that process, okay, um, um, very important. My first trade that I took here ended up being a loser, right? Uh, even though if it was a small loser, right? So that's really unusual for me. Usually my first two trades of the day are profitable. So when I combine, oh, and then last piece was my my mic. I had to go to a backup headset because my primary mic was not working. Okay, so 
when you, I get all three of those combinations going, then my first trade's a loser. That, for me, is a sign to head to the sidelines, even if, if I think I'm the greatest trader in the world. And so everyone who I'm speaking to here knows who they are, traders who overtrade, draw down their accounts in big ways, get frustrated by market action or can't identify it. When you have things that are not working right for you outside of trading, and then you have to come into trading, trading is a mentally challenging sport. Okay, You have to bring your A game to make money here. So what I suggest is recognize, just like Dr. Andrew Menneker and Dr. Brett Steenbarger would suggest, uh, Dr. Menneker has an a, uh, um, acronym, rule. Recognize, understand, label, and express. I recognized that I was frustrated. I took a stop on my first trade of the day, frustrating me again. I had technical equipment uh, issues. I didn't feel I was 100%, and the price action was whippy and has been whippy almost every day for the first hour, making it difficult for me to get an edge, and I did not want to dig a hole. I'm having a very, very good week. I didn't want to dig a hole. Okay, so at this point, I'm stopped out here, right, and NQ still hasn't gone anywhere. Okay, so at this point, I'm saying I'm not really recognizing the price action. I know that um, I at least have an influence on other traders that are in the room, and I made an active decision, not a passive one, to put myself on the sidelines. Okay, so the next thing that I want to point out here, NQ and ES, after these little tests, never got below, either one of them, below, the, below Wednesday's high. And importantly, in NQ, I had pointed out pre-market, I put it on the chart. This whole blue area, guys, when an area is marked in blue like this, poorly auctioned. This is a very large poorly auctioned area. And I've discussed before, there's two ways where a poorly auctioned market can work. So a poorly market auction, auction market can either trade very quickly through and then very quickly down. I went over this in pre-market, right? Uh, it can, or it can grind through, right? Or the last choice is it can quickly reject, a la right here when we first got into that area yesterday, which is exactly what it did. Okay, but it, it, those are the three choices. But it was clear to me, right, look at this price action on NQ in a calm fashion, right, when you don't need anything from it, and that's a big key. Okay, lack of counter rotations, consistent higher highs, consistent lower higher lows. Um, rejection off of Globex high, first time in, that's fine, you got a little counter rotation there, but then right back and driving, and it drove all afternoon, and guess where it stopped? It stopped right where the open gap was, and right where we were no longer poorly auctioned, okay? Now, I got news for you guys. If NQ can't go down, the odds of ES going down, even though we're in a 50-60 retrace, is what this extended area is, is very, these areas are all specifically areas that we can go through 50-60 retraces, but guess what we got right above us? Okay, we've got an open gap here, and we are now into this poorly auctioned area. If we do not reject out of here and get underneath by tomorrow morning during trading, right, we do not get underneath this, this 1952, really in three quarters, okay, the, or really we're just going to say the high of the day, right, at this point we're just going to get underneath the high, the high of the day from yesterday. If we fail to do that, we are poorly auctioned right into the open gap. So 1965, 1964, 1966 becomes a logical target to have for tomorrow, and um, I would not stand in the way. Now, I want to address some people's questions. People are always asking me, why do I not put zones? Occasionally, we will see rejections out of these zones. It'll come in, and then it'll come out, and it won't re-auction the whole poorly auctioned area. Okay, guys, here's the deal with that. There's no rules to what the market has to do, okay? Sometimes it'll come in, auction halfway through, come back out, and then the next day finish that off. Sometimes it'll come up in the morning, reject out, and then come back up. Sometimes it'll just cut straight through, won't even bother rejecting out. But I know that the quite often, very often, that the odds of trading straight through this are very high, and therefore you'll see that when I do have zones in those areas, I pit very clearly. Weak zone, needs one minute tick divergence to work, and it has to work fast, meaning once it gets in here, it has to get out of here quickly or I'm gone. Why? Because otherwise it can break straight through and push up just like we had 
yesterday, as a matter of fact, uh, excuse me, not yesterday, Tuesday on the downside. We had a, a very similar area in NQ and ES, just like we had in NQ today, and the exact same behavior was there. What's the price? Okay, so I want to stop. What's the price I pay for that? The price I pay for that is that there's going to be times I miss trades in that zone, and for me, it's worth sidestepping these locations, okay, and waiting till we get up here to take my trade than it is for me to try to have the guesswork and be anxious knowing that we can push through here easily, okay? That's my answer to that. So to recap really quickly, and then I'll let everyone go and have a good night. Oh, there's one other thing I want to show, the grand finale here. Uh, so first of all, poorly auctioned area. We knew that in the morning. Again, these charts are posted, guys, as you all know, in the morning. This is a slow grind through here. I would print this chart and have this as an example of a poorly auctioned area that's gotten re-auctioned extremely well, right? Um, and uh, furthermore, even if you're bearish on ES, you're going to need NQ to participate. And in order to get um, either one of these markets down, you're going to have to wait and get in below the prior day's high, which simply did not happen all day. Um, I spoke to several guys. Uh, one of whom was in the room, um, and actually two guys who were in the room. One guy was one was frustrated that he never got an opportunity to get long. Um, okay, so in this kind of day, the only way to get long is to chase up. Good luck with that if that's your normal strategy. Uh, very difficult, right? And then the other example of that would be that of yesterday. Okay, where where if we're trading zones, right? We come up. And we a we've got an open drive higher, which we didn't have. We come to the zone, we come back to a support point, and then we continue up. Okay, that's when everything works right, and we get those layups into those zones. We didn't get that today. The best I can do on a day like today, where it's a chop fest, is do exactly what I did, which is cross my hands, go. I took my shot. The price action is not beneficial to me, and I'm out. Now, the last thing I've been warning about: counter rallies and down markets are beasts. Okay, they will destroy your trading account. They are hurtful. They are mean, just plain mean. That's a good way to describe it. They're mean. They take your money away if you're not careful. Okay, so I pulled up specifically for everyone who wants to find a market top. Okay, this is August of, uh, I want to say, um, 11, 12, 11. This is the high in gold, okay? Now, look at this move down. I remember I was trading this. Everyone said this was the beginning of the end. It's over. And a lot of people shorted after we had this huge move. A lot of people got bearish and were sure that we were going to move and retrace and break down below to this point. Okay, that's where, that's where their, their target was. Okay, and they got short, and they got smoked back up. Now, let's put this in perspective, right? This is a big chart. So I want to do that. This is what people saw at the time. It was a pretty, this was a really extended move. People were calling for blow-off tops. We were really stretched, and uh, people were really looking for us to push all the way down to 1550 okay and they really um, this is a from 1950 all the way down to 1750 this is a $200 an ounce drop in the price of gold people were dying to get short okay and they started shorting obviously we see this didn't work out here here they try to push back down they got one day here a push down this thing went all the way back and popped a new high before trapping back underneath and then finally rolling over. But that's not the end of the story. Look how long it took. Okay, let's pull this in. Up, down, up, down, up. You finally think, ah, this is the third time down, all the way back up. It took almost a full another year of sideways trading before we finally, finally, finally got a break all the way back down into this area the first time in right so off of this huge run right here right back down to 1350 it took a year of up and down all the way into 13 it started in 11 we really didn't get the breakdown until 13 <clears throat> back to the downside this is important guys 
when you're a day trader, don't get overly bearish. Just stay with stay with what stay within your field of vision. Okay, everything has a field of vision. If you're a football team, you can't worry about the last team of the year if you're playing the game today. Your field of vision is today. Now, the last um, the last thing I want to leave you with is this: No one day matters. No one trade matters. Don't bury yourself. Don't give back all your profits from a week on one slow, grindy day. Recognize your price action that suits your trading style and take advantage of it. So um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Uh, my name is Simon. The intention of this is an intention of the live market preview, the intention of the, um, the blog in general is to take traders from being frustrated, boom bust traders or blow up traders to first break even and then consistently profitable. That's the goal, consistently profitable day in, day out. That is my goal. And I've achieved that with almost every one of my traders. Even in difficult markets, we've got been, a, been able to manage to get to break even and then in good markets, accelerate um, accelerate out of that. Okay, so um, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, contact me directly at tradeandperform at gmail.com. If you would like a trial into the live market preview, uh, send me an email as well, tradeandperform at gmail.com. Hit me on Twitter, hit me on StockTwits. Um, and by the way, if you like what you're hearing here, please, a little Twitter love would go a long way. I work hard at this to help traders out, and uh, that would be a great way of giving back if you could. So uh, at any rate, I hope everyone made a lot of money. There's plenty of room for nice guys in this business, but just be aware there's a lot of mean guys sitting out there waiting to take your money if you're fucking up and you're taking trades in the wrong trade location. Okay, guys? Anyways, my name is Simon, and uh, everyone have a good night. Um, I already have my charts finished for tomorrow, so I'm going to bed. Uh, see you all in the morning.